How do everybody? We're back for another episode. Um, I wasn't lying when I said last time it was going to be a hectic weekend. I've had no sleep. I finished work at six this morning over in Wales. Come back across the country on the train. Been to Gainsborough to pick up the uh, torque wrench. Shout out to Rob, Rob Boston Racing. He's lent me his, lent me his uh, fucking massive torque wrench. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, luckily, I had a press as well, uh, so I don't have to go to my mates now. You can see it. Press, sorted, pressing the gears on. And more importantly, all the parts are turned up. Oil, bearings, seals, and the all important gears from Japan. Judy rang me this morning, she was like, guess what's arrived? I was like, thank fuck, because I've only got this weekend to fucking do it. So uh, today is going to be rebuilding the gearbox. Um, I'll go into as much detail as I can, showing you all the little bits and bobs, differences between the uh, the third gear specifically, what I've seen before. Um, and yeah, I hope it's, uh, it's going to be helpful. Well, if you're watching this, no doubt it probably will be helpful for, helpful for you. Um, yeah, let's get straight into it. So here we have oil, gone back to red line. I'm not going to go into depths about this, but I've gone back to red line because I keep changing oils and this stuff always works. And I think to myself, why do I change Uncle Scotty's cocktail or what's it called? Uh, Andrew Tech's cocktail. Uh, Beda built, he runs it. I'm running it. He, he runs a lightweight, but um, switched it up a bit this time. I've gone with 7590 instead of 75140 and the heavyweight. See, what, see how that goes on. <laughs> Just because... I like changing oils and I shouldn't, but fuck it. Um, completely contradict myself there. Another tub of that, going to do an engine oil change because we haven't done one on the new engine, believe it or not. Uh, it takes eight litres now, I've got some left in there. And here's all the cogs, these are the important bits. Uh, oil filter, synchro set for third gear, bearing for the input shaft, input shaft, input shaft, output shaft, third gear. Why, why is it always? It's always the third, the last corner in it. Fourth gear, um, excuse me, third and fourth uh, hub, the slider bit, the selector gear. Third and fourth on the output shaft, nuts, carbon line synchros, uh, drive shaft seals, prop shaft seal. Capiche, let's get on with this. Oh yeah, let me show you that first. Oh, it's too big to even fucking get it, get it in the camera. It's uh, 800 newton meter, three quarter inch torque wrench. Uh, let me get out, I'll show you. Almost need to uh, zoom out. No, I won't zoom out. Look at that. Look at the size of that bastard. So, shout out to uh, Rob, legend, coming through at the last minute. Saved me about 600 quid. Um, but this goes up to 800 newton meters. So, well, along with my new tools that we made the other week, we can now properly talk the, uh, the gear sets up. So, the camera's not following me for some reason. Fuck knows. So let's get it, let's get in there and uh, let's get building it back up. Here we go. Output shaft first. Then that is an old gear. We don't need that. We do need this though. That's the part number if anyone's uh, interested. Um, this is for the old uh, pre two thousand and eight gear sets because this has got the ten mil Woodruff key. Um. And when I say 10 mil, I mean, that's 10 mil wide, not six mil wide. And it sits in that groove, like, like so. Um, so the corresponding the gear has to have a 10 mil wide slot and not a six mil wide slot. Simple, nice and easy. There's the new one. Give it, uh, give it a wipe inside and on the mating surfaces there, just so there's no Shit, you know, getting in there, and then I'm going to apply. Um, I, I haven't bought enough gear oil, so I'm going to actually just use some ATF. It's fine, it's gear oil, it's oil, it's lubricant, we're all good. So, first of all, we've got the hub basket um, and the selector sleeve for first gear and second gear. So, I want to make sure it's all clean, do you know, no brass swarf or anything. Um, in any of it, and you'll notice it's got like little grooves. I zoomed in a bit. It's got little grooves on this side. Now that goes to the bottom down. It's important. 
So let's do that. Um, it's already got a bit of uh, lube on and whatnot um, from the previous. Uh, what am I trying to say? From the from when it's come out of the car. Yeah. So that slides on. Make sure you've got the little clips in as well. Uh, they go. Well, they only go in one place. Um, it's where there's little gaps, you know, for them. Um, and then just I just half and half them, you know. So it grooves down. And then line it up with, there's three little cutouts in there. Line those three clips up with those three little grooves, like so. There's that. Next up, synchro. This is uh, second gear, uh, second gear synchro, yeah. First gear synchro is already on. So just make sure that's got no brass swarf crap in it. Inspect the brass. You know, obviously this is fine. Um, there's no excessive wear on any of it so we put that back on and this is the inner you know friction ring uh the bulk ring sorry this is the steel friction ring um just, i'm just checking it's got no crap in it so they go together like so i'm oh, sorry it was off camera there um they go together like so so it's all nice and flush and then that goes into um the selector ring, it sits inside that hub there. So we go on there like that. And the three little groove, three little, see them little like peg parts there. <laughs> I need to keep getting in camera. See them little peg parts there. They sit in the grooves where those clips were. You know where the little clips were on the uh, on the selector hub. So that sits in there like, like so. Next up, we've got second gear. So we make sure there's no crap on there, no crap on there. We'll put, we've got second gear um, bearing. Little needle bearing, that one goes on first. Sits around the hub, like a, like a central hub point, which is pressed on. I'll show you on the next gear, um, on the um, input shaft, because we'll be doing one of those. And this just sits over, it's got a little, before I put it on, it's got, six um locating pins and that sits into the six locating pins on uh, pins on the uh, friction ring of the um syn synchromesh synchronizing ring uh, they'll have a name but i don't know what it is so we just give that a little line up spin just until until it locks in like that and there we have it and then just check i was just check the operation you know make sure it, it locks into gear, you know, it selects the gears as it should. Because you don't want to go pressing all this together and then it not, you know, select the gears. And these should move freely uh, on the shafts. What I'm going to do is just a little bit of uh, ATF, you know, gear oil, just, just in that needle bearing, just to. It sounded a little bit, a little bit rough, you know, it was a bit dry of uh, oil. There we go. Plenty in there. Like that. Apologise in advance, by the way. This is uh, almost definitely going to be a long video, but it's all good stuff. So um, I put these uh, little Woodruff keys back in. You can just see where they're worn. Do you know on one side? I just put them back just for good practice. Just the way that uh, they came out. You can feel how they uh, how they sit in. So now we want the new gear, and this is this is the new um, third and fourth on the output shaft. So nice bit of gear oil in there. You can piss everywhere, and we don't actually have a gauge on this press, um, but. It says no more than four ton, uh, three point nine ton, of uh, pressure is to be applied to get this to uh, seat, seat, whatever you want to call it. So it slides over the first one like so. Comes up to the second one, and then it, that's where it gets tight because this is, I, I presume this is going to be different tolerance to the fifth and sixth gear, you know, like, um, so that it does that, so that it slides over that um, shaft. Uh, you know, the, the diameter of here is going to be uh, slightly smaller on this one. 
um, you get what I'm saying. So this is fifth and sixth gear now. Um, we're going to put fifth and sixth gear straight on there as well. And make sure, really important, there's nothing in between that main surface there. Make sure that's clean. Nothing in between that main surface and obviously this corresponding main surface. Make sure it's nice and clean. Same principle as when you're building the, uh, the engines. Clean, clean, clean. Just absolutely grafted the uh, the gimbal with gearbox oil, but oh well, needs must. So there we go. So that took a bit of uh, jiggling. I got a bit of a sweat going on. Ideally, this press is not uh, tall enough. My mate's one's a floor standing one. It's got a bit more um, height to it. Uh, this is right on the on the limit of where I want to be. So anyway, nevertheless, um, plenty more of this on. Nice, spill that everywhere. So I'm just going to wipe that all around there. Next up, we've got the new bearing, um, the uh, NSK six two o nine Z is the uh, coding of it. And that should be a lot easier than the gears were to press on, um, he says, but we shall see. Can we just start, I forgot it straight, can we start pushing that on? Yeah, there we go. So there we have it, it's all the way home now. Um, I just used a combination of old bearing, uh, this this thing that we, what's it called, the uh, weld on flange for the external wastegate. Um, and actually the old nut, just as long as I didn't press it down any further than the threads because it would uh, obviously knacker them. So the only thing to go on now is um, the the new nut, the new 55mm um, nut, which I'll go and get now and then we can put it into my new little jig and have a go at talking it up. This is the moment of truth for my tool, my holding tool, and also... Um, yeah, this is the best one to do first because this is the one that has the most torque on it. So, yeah, let me uh, let me go get that. That's part number eight zero two six four five zero one zero. That's the new fifty five mil um, nut. Um, and this time, look, there's the difference between uh, punched and unpunched. Do you know what I mean? That's where it snapped last time. This one's clean and new. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of. Thin, you know, lightweight oil on bit of WD, um, just to get the right torque, um, just to get the right torque on there when we come to tighten this up. Look at this absolute beast. That's uh, that's on the floor there. <laughs> uh, it's uh, over a metre high. So what we're going to do is set it to five hundred and seventy. Can we see on there? Five hundred and twenty, forty, sixty, seventy. Five hundred and seventy newer meters which is a ridiculous amount um, then we're going to put the new gear set in the old clamping tool I'm just going to wipe off any grease off these two flanges just to give it, as I said, every fighting chance fingers crossed we're all good slide that in there slide that over or not Right, wish me luck. Yep, 570 newton meters. I can tell you, <laughs> that was uh, that was some <laughs> some going. So whilst it's still uh, clamped in its uh, device, got a, uh, a flat head punch. Whoa, that's too zoomed. Flat head punch like that, um, and we're going to punch the. The flat spot if you can see it there we go nice i'll just rotate that and uh repeat i know exactly what you're thinking now <laughs> what a fucking idiot but boosted boys did this so i'm gonna do it uh they they had trouble with this backing off you know with the nut backing off so what i've done is just put the old nut on with two spaces you know to give the gap um, just to protect the diff threads, you know, so they don't get any weld on them. And I'm just going to put the smallest of tacks 
just on that inside edge there. You probably can't see it, but I'll show you it close up after I've done it. There we go. Not a welder. You can just see that there. It's not... Whoop. Let me zoom in. <laughs> there we go. It's not the prettiest of uh, things, I must admit. But it is a very, very small tack. And then we've just got one on the other side. Um, just in case it was going to unbalance anything, if, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's the output shaft complete. Make a good thumbnail, that. A bit further over that way. <laughs> um, so yeah, next up input shaft which is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's twice as long so we're going to have to figure something out with this overhanging the bench or drill on the bench or yeah let's move on to that so next part of the puzzle is um the this is the input shaft so first of all third gear so that's there it's the part number if you remember me saying this one's got six um little teeth holders and then remember they all snapped off the friction ring on my old synchro mesh um, and this one, newer one's only got four so everything else about it is identical um, everything else about the gear is you know sorry let me get in focus identical other than the missing teeth because I'm changing from the six to the four we've got to change the synchronizer ring so what I'll do is I'll press this one on first sorry not press this one just rests on Get this one on first, and then I'll show you the difference in the uh, synchronizer pack. I'll zoom her in a little bit so you can see again. Plenty of uh, transmission fluid um, on that spline there. Then we're going to put the roller bearing in. The uh, if you can see the the needle bearing, roller bearing, whatever. That goes on next. Lovely jabbly. Probably need a bit thicker, right? It's quite thin this, unless it's just because it's red on all sides, but put it on. Can never have too much. Right. Get some in there. That one slides on like so. So then now we're going to go on to the synchro set. So this synchro set here, there's part number. This is for the 08 plus um, gear set. So the difference being, this is the this is the old synchro set here. Uh, the six six pin one. So everything else is the same, other than. That's got six tabs on the friction ring, and this one's only got four to match the new gear that's only got four. The new one just going on, which goes on like that, and those four tabs, they line up. So what are you meant to put it on? You're meant to put it on like the friction ring, uh, the, the inner bulk ring first, which is that one. That one goes straight down onto the... Um, third gear, then the friction ring, it's probably got a proper name that, but that's what I'm going to call it, and that locates into the four holes, and then the outer bulk ring, which then locates into the spare little tabs on there, and that's the whole assembly together. So this is the new, this is the new inner and outer sleeve for third and fourth gear. To start with, there's a little paint dot there that you just keep them lined up, because I presume it's balanced like that. And then, as I remember what I said on the last one, make sure the little groove line faces down, downwards. Um, the other way you can look at it, um, if you look at it from the side of this of the hub there, this side's deeper. Um, I'll put a picture of the instruction manual in the screen, but this side's shallower, this side's deeper. This side goes down. Um, and then line the, the two... Um, Paint markers up. So, um, let me just show you. Let me take that out. Just to show you the difference 
so this is what I was saying about them being slightly worn if you can see but the teeth are uh, slightly worse on this side they're like pointed and they're meant to look like half like that would you believe um, they're meant to be like like half like that um, and these are all like pointed and uh, knackered from the whole trying to get it into fucking third gear that it wouldn't so we just need to transfer these little clips from the old one to the new one and that's where that so that sits like just like so and so clips are installed uh, back into the um, corresponding things just make sure ridge ring down and then the groove uh, deeper side groove narrow side groove the deep side groove on the hub goes down as well so we're going to now put that um, that sounds really rough but it's this bottom bearing it's not it's not this bearing so what we're going to do is align this these portions these gaps up with these uh, on the outer bulk ring you know these gap areas here um, and then it aligns up onto the um, a spline so it can only go gonna go in one place so this part gets pressed on um, I've just taken the outer um, ring off Do you know these that's your selector ring um, so this part gets pressed on at the same time um, as the inner race of the fourth bearing but you've just got to make sure that the hole um, is at the opposite side to the oil hole um, that comes through the center of the shaft so if we just if we have it like so, we know that it's got to go the opposite opposite side to the oil hole. Like so. Here we go. <laughs> so it's stacked a bit oddly, but it's going to do the job. So now that we've got that uh, in place, um, we can put the. find a white dot there's a white dot line up with that white dot put the outer ring on make sure all the clips are in place you know the little internal clips there that just rests on there like that so what I'm going to do now is a bit more of the old transmission fluid ATF whatever get that plenty on that inner race around there just give it uh, some nice lubrication. Get it on there as well. It's not going to harm things. It's on the, uh, the old selector ring. So now, uh, next up is the Synchromesh 4 um, fourth gear, which is so. This is the this is the old fourth gear here. So we want, sorry, not the synchromesh, we're going to put the bearing on first, but I believe we've got a new bearing here, part number, there, and that replaces fourth gear bearing there. So that's a new one we've got going on, I'll put that one over there for now. Um, so again, get some oil on that. Slide that in a race on there, like so. We're going to take this bulk ring off, and we're actually replacing fourth gear, the whole thing. I want to keep that as a spare, and the bulk gear we're changing, the bulk ring we're changing for the um, carbon lined one, if you remember me saying. And then the bulk rings, I've got three, it's just the fourth, fifth, and sixth. They're all the same part number. This is just off the 08, 08 play and above. Subaru recognised it as being an issue. Um, and then changed it for carbon lined ones, which are carbon lined. As you can see, well, you can't see at the minute, but they're not brass. They're carbon lined. So don't touch them with your fingers because they're, they're, they're sharp, like really sharp. If you rub your fingers on them all that way, 
So, bit of uh, bit of gear oil uh, on there again. Synchro goes on, the carbon synchro. And a bit more oil in the middle of the gear. Don't want the leak in it. And then fork gear. Fork gear goes straight on. So we've got a brand new bearing on fourth. Get some oil in there. Brand new bearing. Brand new gear. Brand new bulk rim. Brand new selector and hub. Sorted. So now we can press the um, the next set on, uh, which is the fifth gear. We're going to be pressing the um, fifth gear on and then the hub and the same principle. So yeah, now we're going to install fifth gear bush. Um, exactly the same way as what we did uh, the previous bush. This one's just got like a base plate on it. I've put plenty of uh, hydraulic oil, um, you know, transmission fluid. Uh, in the in the middle on the inner of the race um, and then we're going to put plenty more a little bit on there the oil all over my hands um, and then yeah press that one on uh, in exactly the same fashion I'm going to use the old brush maybe sort of get the idea now um, they're all basically the same sort of principle um, I just each time I press the bush on like that I just make sure there's no play make sure the gear still turns freely um, and then you know engages and locks just, just the same as what we did on the with first and second gear on the uh, um, on the other one um, when we was doing that next up we've got fifth gear uh, fifth gear in a race bearing which is this one so again the same part number as same part number as the one for fourth gear it's the same bearing um you've seen that anyway so we're just gonna we'll just check that's the, the right size yeah it is so that one's going on this one's the old one we'll keep it it's my collapse um, and we've always got it's always good to have a spare um Yeah, that one, again, cut in plenty of ATF. And also on the, you know, on the, in a race, again, you get the idea. Bearing on. And then we're going to change the bark ring. Again, bark ring is brass one, standard. We're going to go with... The carbon, one of the carbon ones. I could really wash my hands because they're drafted in grease now. I'm going to cut myself. Um, bark ring. Uh, we're going to put fifth gear goes on next. Make sure that's got plenty of uh, oil in there. Fifth gear goes on the top like so. Plenty of oil in there. Bark ring next. Um, so that goes on that way. They do feel a little bit grippier than the other ones, to be honest. Um, next up is the selector basket for fifth and sixth. The same principle as the last selector basket. So line her up. Make sure um, that gap goes into that piece there. Fifth and six, remember the selector ring, remember grooves down. Um, and the same, I forgot to say, but uh, deeper sides down um, on that. And line up the white dot with the white dot. We've got the final sixth gear bearing bark ring so we're trying to change the bark ring as usual get rid of that one got the lime one going on line the little snippets up there 
and then just take note of the oil hole wherever they are so the oil holes are there make sure the oil hole on this one's facing away and then gear we'll take the bearing out for now but gear goes on first needle bearing plenty of grease and uh, lube on it slot the needle bearing in and plenty of lube on that Remember, take note of the position of the oil rings, make sure that one's away from it. And then we're just going to press on, finally. Um, this last bushing, which is the inner race form of this bearing. Steady as it's going in, yeah, make sure it's actually going in and lined up. Which it should be. Back that off. Final piece of the puzzle now is the last bearing that goes uh, on the top and just make sure it goes on the right way um, this clip here this like uh, ring here this is a roller bearing so it's three pieces uh, two inner races and an outer race so take the outer this is the outer top top half of the bearing we've got the middle part and then this is the lower part but there's a groove in the uh, in the outer race um, that locates this in, in the gear set so to install this, we've just got an inner race. Um, just make sure there's no crap on it. Inner race goes uh, in place like so. And then we're just gonna press that, um, press that down into, into place. Exactly the same as uh, how we've done the rest of it bodging things together. <laughs> no. Um, well, yeah. I say no. But yeah, we're bodging things together to uh, make a little stack and uh, press it on the best you can. There we go. Sorted. Dog hair central. Okay. to race on now and then install the final piece of the puzzle which is the final top half of the bearing <laughs> Over to the uh, handy dandy machine now to install the new, um, whatever it is, the new um, locking nut. Washer goes on, and then the new lock nut that goes around the top. You got anything over there? So, same principle as the output shaft. Um, I did just video this, but uh, for some reason I'll put in the screen what I have, but it didn't record it. I took a picture instead. Um, so we've got it clamped. Uh, let me zoom. Got it clamped into the bench tool that I explained in the last video, and then we've talked this main shaft nut up to three hundred and ninety-two newton meters, and then we've just staked it, um, just using a punch and a hammer and um, that style of punch this time you know like a flat head type um straight in there like that this is simple nice and straightforward um and i'm just gonna now just put uh, a couple of tack welds on the same as i did on the other shaft just as a peace of mind really and um, so i'll do that now
I've tacked them now. Just a, a really tiny little dab. Um, if it'd help if I got it in focus. Tiny little dab on that side and a tiny little dab on that side. Just peace of mind, really. Um, this wasn't the one that came off, but I don't want it to be the one that comes off. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's move on now, and we'll get the we'll get it back into the casing, get the box built back up. First things first, we're going to put the center plate back onto the main plate. So we've just got I haven't got any three bond, um, so I've just got some um, Loctite. This is just from Halfords, I think. Originally, is it? Um, just grey silicon, silicon sealant. So we're going to go all the way around this outside uh, head edge here. You know, both both sides of the um, bolt holes with this gasket sealant. That's the first job. Um, I've cleaned out. I've spent a good four or five hours cleaning through methodically all the parts. Gasket sealant. Put this on. Um, just really thin, as uh, as I always say with this stuff. Um, just. Go around, dab it, and smooth it over your finger. If you don't have a nozzle like me. If you have a nozzle, great. Cut it real fine. Wang it round, sorted. It's not as critical in the gearbox as it is in the engine. Yeah. I'll lift the centre casing on carefully now. Um, obviously, make sure everything's clean. Make sure there's no shit in the... Uh, you know, brass, you know, swarf or anything in the any of the front front diff or anything. <laughs> Lift that up. So it'll tap all the way around with the the rubber mallet. Sorted. Sorted. Two gear sets, input shaft, output shaft. Um, you'll be familiar with them by now uh, at this stage in this video. But we've got the selector fork mechanism here, um, and this is the order that it goes in. So these two would stay together, so you can't really mess that up. Uh, and this one is the separate one. Uh, it just goes, the tooth is closer to the end, and you can see the alignment marks actually go into the box to return it in the box. Um, really straightforward. Uh, let me just move that end casing out of the way. So, we've got the big gear, output gear, goes in the one with the one fork on it, and then the two, the two piece fork goes, uh, has the input shaft one going in it. So make sure both gears are in neutral. I start off with um, the input shaft, just, I don't know, it's preference. Um, and then put something under there to hold that up, like so. So we just lift the input shaft into place in the two selector fingers, like so. And then we can rest that one down, yeah? Just nice and straightforward. Next one, this is straightforward as well. You guessed it, we're going straight in onto this selector finger like so and then move it move it all over a little bit oh, it's really heavy and pain in the ass um, and then all you're going to do now is you're going to lift that gear onto this gear and they'll both mesh together then like well they hopefully should mesh together <laughs> there we go easy peasy next up got the idler uh, the sorry not the idler the reverse gear assembly so that just lifts up make sure this this piece comes off the end and can turn um, so it just make sure it's locked into its uh, retaining slot and that bolt hole goes the same side as that bolt hole and, and then on there you see and then that just literally rests on the bottom cog uh, on the bottom base cog there oh not like that that sometimes falls out uh, and then rests onto the um, this main cog here, same one as the first gear. So that's that assembly done. So now I've got to lift that all in one piece uh, up onto the main assembly, uh, main block. So what I need to get now is some um, red rubber grease for the input shaft for the seal. 
and for this seal and then also for the bearing that goes onto the main shaft. So a bit of red rubber grease uh, just on this um, bearing here. I just put a little bit on the um, on the actual shaft and then just a bit on the uh, actual bearing itself just so it's not running dry. And that'll dissolve in the uh, gear oil when you um, when you first start it up and then just bit on that base there just to just to make sure that I have seen it on one video on YouTube ages ago and some guy um, this hadn't seated properly there's like a little uh, there's, in fact I'll show you so this bearing here um, that's the bottom and that's the top sits like this uh, on the bottom of the gear set and what happened is it had not seated properly it not had it you know centered in the right spot um, and it had caused the, the the gear blocks to sit up and then it had worn this bearing out i think that was what had happened anyway either that or um the bearing had just collapsed and failed but yeah um i was going to get a new one of them actually forgot oh well uh it's not it's not worn out or anything it's all it's all okay so a bit of grease on top of that as well just just for good measure center that the best you can well i'll show you as it's going in anyway um oh, also red rubber grease on this one and on this one this one's for reverse um mainly on the top as it's just you know so it can slot in uh, easier there and then this one's just the um this one's just the main <laughs> i say just this one is the main bearing um the main casing bearing one of one of um Again, just lube that up nicely and a bit on the corresponding parts uh, on the on the gear set Wah! I just knocked the camera when that was going in um, but as you saw it, it's a bit of a bit of a wiggle a bit of a pain in the ass I tend to get I tend to get the gear set down um, and then like kind of wedge my hand underneath the, the as you saw, you know, underneath the uh, output shaft. Um, and then I can pick the reverse idler up and put it in and sort of locate it. Um, the, the areas to watch, I'd say, are make sure these three selector um, pins are in, in place. Just checking that. Um, and then that's about it, really. After you've got that down to a, a set, set of set height, uh just make sure you you don't forget to seat it down before you've got the um reverse assembly in and then massively important make sure that that bearing seated on the base there you know the the one that i just showed you that i put the red rubber grease on so the only other thing to put on is the selector fork now i'd highly recommend whilst this is all stripped and out um you replace this selector finger i've done it um i've snapped loads of them but i'll go grab one and show you what it looks like uh, before but if you've watched my previous videos you'll see what this previously looks like this one's a billet one from lithuania iag do one and ppg do one 225 quid ppgs i know is um and it's just reinforced in this area and it's billet rather than cast um let me show you what one looks like anyway yeah that's what one looks like snapped um that's another one snapped <laughs> Um, the, the piece just comes off and it's it's cast as you can see uh, just yeah not great so you can see what the original one looks like and then this is what the um, what the billet one looks like just for comparison and um, it's got a little area of reinforcement there so ha anyway I'm, I'm, I'm rambling off on a, on a tangent again for a change but highly recommend you change that whilst the box is out because you do especially with the age drum now you're going to run into issues this piece goes uh in place just just in there put a bit of red, red rubber grease actually while i'm at it on this uh, shaft because it is going into a into a needle bearing so if you just uh put a bit of put a bit of grease i say a bit that's quite a lot that isn't it um and remove any dog hair Yep, so that just slots 
you see that just slots normally it does slots into into place there and then yeah there we go and then it wiggles in if you've got the gears all uh, set to neutral have we nope we haven't that one's in not in neutral so it's a bit of a bit of a faff but they do uh, they do go in so next these three retaining bolts in here and the reverse gear bolts i'll show you as what they are as the as they go in next up we've got the retaining plungers and springs uh, with little ball bearings in the end uh, that retain the three shifter forks well four shifter forks because there's another one on the back side for the reverse but i'll put these ones in first um just make sure you put a bit of grease or gearbox oil and um, just just on them for good practice um so they don't score the balls out when you put them in uh, so they just simply press in to place there's three of those one two and this is a number three and then on top of that you have uh, a retaining uh, like nut um, and it goes in with an eight mil allen head so eight mil allen head and the tightening torque i'll show you them first it's these here the tightening torque is 37 newton meters little bit of light uh, oil just wd-40 I don't want it everywhere just on the on the threads you know just so you apply the correct torque and then tighten those up you may have to just give give these a little bit of a so 37 newton meters on the torque wrench 8 mil um, allen head and then just torque those up Yeah, one thing to note as well while you're doing this, because there's a lot of little small parts, don't drop anything down that hole. <laughs> uh, uh, ask me how I know that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, when I first started doing them, I dropped one of the balls down that hole into the front diff. Like this. Uh, there's two bolts, a short one and a longer one. The short one goes through the casing uh, into the, this top part here. The longer one goes through uh, the bottom, if you remember when we had the reverse section out. Um, a bit of uh, when we had the reverse section out there was a hole at the bottom a threaded hole and one at the top um, you, you can turn this round and then look through that hole and you'll see it uh, lined up well it should be anyway so that one tightens up with a 12 mil um, socket and make sure it's got the crush washer on there also and then that tightens up to 25 newton meters 25 newton meters there um, gearbox oil everywhere, <laughs> all over my. You know, sorted. Final piece on this centre housing is a little ball bearing. Um, and it's the retainer for the reverse idler. So uh, pop that ball in, pop the spring in, and then you've got the final um, little bung, the same as the ones for the, um, the other selectors. And then again, that the tightening torque for that one is 37 newton meters, sorry. Thirty-seven newton meters. Side note, don't be concerned that this uh, input shaft is sat slightly down um, and you'll notice it's resting on the um, on the gear below it because when you put the main casing on um, the point of sh of picking the correct shim thickness um, the to go in here is that holds the gear set up in the casing 
if that makes sense. So then it puts it in the right position, so it's meshed in the right position, you know, to the uh, output shaft. Just a little side note, if you were looking in there and wondering like, oh, it's touching it, you know, it's not meant to be. Actually, the whole thing lifts up, so I'll show you that in a minute anyway. Next two jobs anyway, before we get carried away. Apply gasket sealant all around this surface here, exactly the same as we did on the surface below. And then we're going to actually remove the old drive shaft seals and fit new ones. Um, I just use a 38mm uh, socket from Halfords um, and an extension and a lump hammer and just gently tap it in. But I'll show you that now. To get it out, I just use a, a big screwdriver. Um, one thing to note, the different part numbers each side. So the right hand side is a 806-735-290. And I've already done this left hand side, but that's the same part number, um, but 300 at the end instead of 290. Um, I don't know whether the grooves in them are handed or I, I don't know, but I just put them in the right way. Um, so normally I just get a screwdriver I don't touch the alloy in the back and then I just just touching the rubber you can feel it and then I just give it a, a tap not don't knock the gearbox off the uh, the stand obviously if you're doing this in a car it's much easier but, um, yeah I mean they just they, they don't take much to come out um, and then usually the springs fall off um, in the back. There's little retaining springs there. But that's it anyway. It wasn't knackered. Uh, I just, just thought, well, I've got it stripped down. Uh, I don't want to have gearbox oil pissing out all over the splitter. So, um, yeah, give that a good clean. Give it a good wipe down. Make sure there's no debris in there. No or anything that's going to get stuck to the new rubber and then new seal uh, let's keep these old ones because you never know when you're at an event and if this you do one of these for any reason and you're pissing fluid out it will wreck the event if i just got two of these in the box at least i know they're not fully knackered uh, you could just swap one over um, but yeah the socket that I've got is from Halfords, 38mm six sided, probably better with a multi point one, but I just have to like kind of squish that out of rubber rim there into this socket. It does it does go in. Um and then I'll just eye it up all the way around, make sure that I've got it going in plumb, you know, square to the perpendicular to the uh to the box. And then it doesn't take much, just a gentle tap and just just check you can just see um, you can just see it all the way around going there uh, going in and just make sure it's flush uh, all the way around Jobs are good and next one, get some sealant on here, give that a wipe and then we can get the centre casing on. Um, before we put the centre casing on, just select fourth gear, uh, just so that you can line these two pins up that go through the casing, uh, the two bolts, um, these ones, they go through the casing into there and there. And it just needs to be in fourth gear for that to be able to happen. So fourth gear is the middle, the middle selector so if you position this, make sure the selector fork, the black billet piece, is over fourth gear. And then, literally, maybe just a bit of a pain because it's in, in the right position. Because um, not lifted up into the right position, but just lift up. There we go. We're in fourth now. Um, yeah, in fourth, so they're in the right position. Just a little side note whilst you're, whilst you're, whilst you're doing it. I wiped some uh, red rubber grease in there as well, do you know, in the actual seal. I forgot to say that. But just giving this a wipe down now. It'd be better if you had a bit of uh, brake cleaner and a bit of something solvent. And then straight on with the sealant again. It's on. 
centre casing time now. So we've had all these parts out because we've had them out to clean. This is a little channel that runs uh, oil back down it to the back of the box, I believe. I don't actually know, I've never actually looked into it, but it basically just slides into that little hole in the back there. Can you see that, this, this little hole here? So it slides into there and it hooks into the top of the box. There's a little pin, like a little pin that goes in there. So that just pushes in. Second part is uh, the oil filter pickup. So I've cleaned out all the mesh inside there. You can see that. Uh, just a bit of red rubber grease on the O-ring. This is the uh, this is the pickup for the pump, and it's uh, got a magnet built onto it as well to pick up any debris. You know, if you do a shredding shredding gears, which I have no idea, I have no idea about. I've never done that. <laughs> um, that just slots into you see this hole, this hole here goes into there. Going sorry up through the uh, casing. It's a nightmare to do this at the side of the track at Alton uh, the other week try and get this into that slot but that goes into there and then you've got three um 10 mil Oop. don't push it in too far um but three 10 mil bolts that then go into there three of the shorter uh 10 mils yeah just a bit of uh, red real low strength uh thread lock and then the tightening torque uh, of of these is 10 newton meters Easy as that. So now we're going to put the two bolts in that go through to the selector gears. You can just look through visually to make sure that they that they're both lined up. Um, and if you've got it selected into fourth gear, you should be uh, good to go. Put a bit of uh, WD-40 on them threads again. And then we'll talk them up. Tighten and talk for them. 34 newton meters. And it's a 17 mil. So just talk those up. Then we're going to go around and put all the casing bolts in the bottom now um, and torque those up. So we've got three nuts going on here. We're going to just put all the remaining ones in and out, all the ones on the side. It's exactly the same on this back side. And then the two top ones, which are this one and this one. That's why you don't put that one in first. <laughs> Top tip. And then talking those to 50 new meters. When you talk to all them down to uh, 50 new meters, then you can put this one back in and nip that up to air torque, which was 34, I think it was. Next bit, we've got your shims that you've taken out. Whichever shims you took out, um, you, sh you should, in theory, measure the height of the um, 
gear set from the base of the block when you're putting this back together um, and then you whatever the measurement is would then be whatever shims you'd need the thickness of the shims but um, I've done this enough times um, and I measure the each cog and bearing when it goes back on you know to make sure with a vernier that it's the exact same size so then the height my deck height is not changing um, so I use the same shims these three shims uh, every time so these three shims the two thinner ones on the bottom bigger one on the top they go straight on top of there just make sure there's no debris as always which there isn't and they just sit straight on top of there like so and that should be flush with this surface because your eye pump then sits on top of that then the next one here has got this circle clip and this circle clip is the one that goes into that top groove you know in the outer race of the bearing uh, on the input shaft so what you have to do to enable this to be clipped in place is actually lift up the input shaft from underneath um, do you know what I was saying before about lifting up the slop in it just see when I lift it up see can do it by hand and that's that simply clipped on so next up we could put the we'll give this a clean again and then put the oil pump um, the oil pump plate on which is this one and this just goes on dry there's no gasket sealant or anything in between there that literally just goes um, straight on dry you need to make sure this this sometimes falls out there's a little spout there I'll take it out so you've seen it that sometimes falls out you need to make sure that's in um, if you have to um, put it in first. It's just, you know on top of the gear there. Um, oh, while well, I remember, all important we need to put the oil pump, uh, the actual oil pump plate back in. So we'll put that in next. Old red rubber grease again, um, and that's going directly onto. This is the I call it the pump plate, but it's the actual rotors of the oil pump, uh, the inner and outer rotor. So I normally just go with the outer rotor first. Just put a bit of uh, grease on that. Says a bit, and puts a lot. <laughs> uh, two little dots upwards, and that just slots in place. Put that on the bottom as well. Just a bit of harm it. There we go, sat in nicely. And then some on the actual inner rotor itself as well, and that just slots in as well. I just line up the two dots, but you don't need to. The uh, pump gear lines it up when you put that in next. So, next job, give it all a wipe. Final, final part of the puzzle, by the way, and I forgot myself, this shim. Um, I tend to put it, it's got a flat side and a curved side. Well, it's not curved, but it's slightly more embossed. I put that flat side down um, and that just goes straight on top of that gear sack, the gear stack there. Uh, and that's before you put this uh, pump housing on. Um, and I put some grease in there, grease on the open bit. And some grease on this bit as well, just to where it sits on top of that bearing. Only a real sliver. That goes straight on there. Next ones are um, the bolts that pulled all everything in in here. So I've changed these because standard they're T40, I think. Um, and they round like no one's business. So I've just put some uh, some higher tensile, I think these are 10.9, higher tensile uh, bolts in because I've drilled them out like three times now. So, um, and these ones seem to be okay, but these are uh, 
five mil uh, Allen head, um, ten point nine high high tensile um, bolt. And there's four of these, and then the other ones. These are the ones that are um, uh, Allen heads, and the other ones are uh, T forty, I believe. T forty, um, and they're like. Pan heads, you know, like a normal, uh, normal bolt. Just putting a tiny bit of thread lock on, um, just so they don't come undone. The other ones, uh, oh, the torque, sorry, these go to is T25. T25? Yeah, torque 25, I'll do. So, torque them up to 25 newton meters, sorry. So, we're going with 25 newton meters there. For these four. Next ones are T40 Torx head, these ones, and they go in all the remaining holes other than these two here. So all the holes that are around the back, there's five in total, and they all go in and torqued up. Again, 25 newton meters on those. Last two to go in um, is the spare gear for the um, oil pump. So we just want a bit of grease on there. That one goes in and then it has a retaining clip. Um, it goes on the back like that. So as you put that down, make sure it's, it's in place before you before you put that spare gear in. On the newer boxes, it doesn't actually have these. It doesn't even have the uh, oil pump. So all that play piece is just completely uh, blocked off. So thread lock on them, exactly the same. Same bolts as the ones we just put in uh, on the back, you know, on the on the in the other area. Bit of thread lock. Where's them down? Torque them up, and same as the others, twenty five newton meters. is this little tray, tray goes on, clips in with a similar sort of little pin design as the uh, the pipe that went through on the back, that just clips in there, like so. Final uh, few bits now, so we've just got the shifting mechanism to go in, so it just has a, like a, a ball that goes in that way and it sits that literally just slides on and then we have uh, raw pins that go through. Go through. Uh, so the camera went dead. Anyway, all I've done is I uh, put that mechanism on, like I said, that pin was already in. I punched the outer pin and the inner pin in there, as you can see. This clip goes on, thin side out, thick side in, circle clip on top with that sprung piece there. That way down, you know, the, the beveled edge down um, and the cut out goes on that side, you know, the, the one with the cutout, you can't really see because of the sun, but uh, two split pair bearings, casing bearings, case, sorry, uh, shaft bearings, uh, they're in two halves, just put some red rubber grease on so they stick, centre diff then slides on top, gasket sealant, and then end casing on. The only other thing I've got to do is uh, put that sump one on there, um, I'll throw a picture in the screen, just gasket sealant on there, sump on, uh, and I'll show you the Put the torques in the screen with a picture now. Same as this. Um, put this on. Put the bolts in. 48 new and me as they go to. Job done. Let's get it back in the car. Uh, the other thing I just forgot to do was swap the prop bearing. So there's part number. I've just thrown a few pictures uh, in the screen here now. Um, basically the phone uh, overheated and stops uh, recording. I had this... I had it on the gimbal and then recording on top of the gearbox um, and it overheated but anyway 
there's a few pictures in the screen now uh box went all back together and then when i've gone and thrown it back in the car uh, i'm getting quite good at doing this now um it only took me about four or five minutes to get it all back in the car so uh, the next video will be uh oil in the car and a, a fair start up uh, i'm going to do an oil and filter on the engine as well um i think i said but yeah join me it's been it's been a long video of this but i think uh, i think it's going to be helpful uh, for for you watching it but yeah join me in the next video and it'll be final final bits and bobs for donington and as i say first start up again go through the gears get them gears meshed together uh, running together yeah take it easy see you in the next episode